Hello, uh, my name is Harriet or Hatters Arts and I'm going to talk over a time-lapse recording of a piece of mine. Normally I just sort of slap these up with uh, music over the top but I got super inspired by Danny Craig's recent videos and how much fun he was having that I sort of thought, I was like, oh, I'll give this recording gig a go. So my idea for the staging of this piece came from a mix of that one sort of X-Files screenshot and uh, that meme image of Sabrina with all the pancakes. Uh, I wanted like Moxie in her casino, now she's like king of the place after you've taken it over, being offered a lighter uh, for a cigar by a bunch of women. Um, I did the initial rough sketch without thinking about anatomy too heavily, so I had to re-sketch it to sort of figure out all the details before adding in the colour and the composition. Um, I found that if I launch into the colour without doing this actual sort of technical like, oh, the arm goes here, the tit goes here, it tends to end very poorly and I still have not learned this lesson but I did this time, so that's what counts. Uh, you can see I'm playing with the angle of the torso um, and I sort of tilt it at one point and I think it gives a really nice depth, but I lost the sort of centre point of the composition that I really wanted to keep. Um, so I tried the torso a few different times. You can see me a few attempts at the face. Um, we will we will get back to that one. Um, uh, you can see also on the left, um, I've got a bunch of layers still going on, but with only about three or four showing. And that's because each sort of sketch and iteration I try of the this part of the sketch, um, I make sure to keep it and then see, check back later once I've been like, oh no, this one was terrible. I'm gonna try a new one. And then go back to the old one and either be like, oh, I was, I was right the first time or nope, nope, that was definitely the right way to go. Um, just sort of keeps me on track of, you know, making sure progress of the image. So after the third or fourth torso work, I finally get the angle right. So at this point, I'm just going to add all in the rest of the details, all the parts of the image, make sure that they fit with that main trunk. Uh, I'm going to add her cards in so I can make sure what not to paint underneath because there's absolutely no point in painting what you will never be able to see in the image. Um, I'm going to start on her faces now because the one in the sketch, uh, the initial one, it didn't have enough sort of detail and, and I just felt it didn't have enough volumetric like information for me to be able to paint it well so I was like maybe I can put it in a more exciting angle and I can't. None of them will work. It will go forward with the original sketch but um, I guess it's you know it's important to sort of try it and be like oh maybe I can improve it and then you're like no no this one's fine it's it's gonna stay all these way. It's kind of it's kind of sad watching this knowing all of these are not going to be used, but you know, that's how it is. <laughs> so now I'm going to start on the hands and uh, it all just totally shifts by the image, but who's there and who should be easy to spot are uh, Lilith, Tanis, Amara, a random bandit, Janie and Aurelia. And uh, all of them either like canonically flirt with Moxie. So Aurelia, Amara and Janie have made out with Moxie, Lilith, or have slept with her, Tanis, at some point during the games. So I was like, let's just put them all in here because this is a fun touch. I found some neat hand references for all the lighters and stuff like that. And my reference sheet for Borderlands and Pure Earth is now absolutely massive because it has all of their model sheets and everything in there as well. Uh, give the arms a little jig about, trying to get the right composition because um, initially I thought five worked really well for the hands but I just wanted six. I wanted as many as possible. Um, I finally moved on to the flatting um, and that whole previous sketching step I think took me about two hours which if anyone's watching me on stream knows that's highly unusual. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that everything was planned out for the painting. So when I added colour, like I am now, I could just just go for it and not have to worry about, oh, is that the sketch in there? Is that line in there? Is that border? Not quite. So now I had to decide what painting sort of style I wanted to use. Either go for a flat style, which would allow me to sort of make adjustments quite easily, or go for a textured style. Uh, I wanted to go for the textured style because I think it would suit the sort of the ambiance of the piece uh, a bit more. And I had to decide if I wanted to bake the lighting in or I wanted to have it on adjustable layers. And I ended up going for adjustable layers because there were so many pieces of the piece, like so many layers, that it just, if I couldn't have adjusted a single arm, if I, you know, slightly off colored something somewhere and I wasn't able to adjust it easily, um, it would have just, it would have sucked. 
So what I'm doing right now is what I think of as like admin work. So I'm just putting on my layers, pulling on my clipping layers, giving everything a base color, making sure that I can just go in and adjust everything, start painting all my base colors, and then come back later and just be like, this is the lighting. Now I've laid everything out, I can start playing with the values and the hues, uh, making sure that everything is a cohesive piece. So you'll also start uh, to see me use the black layer with a color blending mode, and this allows you to see the luminosity of the image. Um, and it's different to if you were to select an adjustment layer and then take the saturation all the way down, because the luminosity of a color is different to its uh, hue, which is its saturation. So I fixed the framing of the piece and get rid of that black or white border around it and use less pop outs, use the pillars on the side of it as more of a sort of pop out effect. I'm now going to start painting the base image of Moxie, um, which I will then apply all of my sort of clipping layers and dramatic lighting to. Um, this is this is lighting that's all baked in, so it's just stuff like oculant occlusion and any sort of area light that would be there before the dramatic lighting. So you see me start to paint this face and um, this will go through many variations and there will be many layers that will pop up on the left and appear and then and be hidden um, and it'll be one of those ones where I go back to the original painting that I did and before I tried anything fancy so um, yeah yeah Moxie's face was a process in, in this painting. <laughs> Most of the painting in this stage is what I consider sort of almost brain dead painting, as in I have all the information there, um, but I'm not working anything out or having to sort of check on things so I can just sort of go it at a pace, maybe have a movie on next to me or listen to a podcast or something like that. Uh, this is the point of paintings where I quite like to stream or hang out on Google Hangouts with friends, um, just to sort of be like, ah, oh, there are other people looking at your screen, so keep focused. Uh, because I find it often if I've if I worked everything out and then the rest of it is this, which is sort of the drudge work, um, it's kind of like oh, I'm not I'm not it's, there's not a, a challenge anymore as it were. Even though I'm going to get a great piece out of the end of it, um, it's still it's still less exciting to work on. Which I think is probably why a lot of my art typically tends to be in the form of like coloured sketches because I can just chuck my ideas of what I want down um, and don't have to go through this process of a total of, I think this painting ended up taking about nine hours, which is definitely the longest I've spent on a piece in a, in a good while. So now that I've got that work out of the way, I can go back to the rest of the piece, see how that's playing with the composition, start to adjust how lighting's looking on the arms and things like that before I get back into painting with them. I make a change to the lighting here rather than the highlight on Moxie being actually just sort of normal, the, the plain sort of painting sticking through. Um, I give it an entire multiplier layer over it and then I have the highlights being the add uh, in a bright pink because I think that just adds more sort of colour to the whole piece. Also in a moment I start to play with uh, the hue of like specifically the multiplier layer that's currently over Box Moxie's base painting because um, she has white face paint on and the purple, the sort of the, the ready purple was sort of washing that all out. So I added, just got a massive airbrush and just lightly dabbed more sort of blue purple over her face to give that contrast. Um, and I think it sort of, it contrasts really nicely with the rest of the warm tones going on in the background. The rest of this is me now just going into the hands, giving them some shade. Um, I don't want the sort of the shadows to be too harsh. I want the, want the multiplier and the add to, to do most of that work. Um, I think there's also quite a good example of me constantly flipping the canvas while I paint. Uh, this is a fairly extreme example here. I also really try not to zoom in too much to the canvas. Um, I don't like to work on massive canvas size because I find that I'm working I'm like, oh, this, this isn't showing pixels, it's fine. And then I look back and I'm like, oh, I was on 100% and that was actually only 0.2% of the image. Um, I didn't succeed here too much. This is 100%, but I've tried to counter that by I'm using quite large brushes when it comes to the details because I knew this was going to be viewed mostly on mobile screens and, and computer screens. This wasn't really a full print image, so I'm thinking about doing it. Um, so any detail that I could have got with a smaller brush wasn't really worth it. I mean, the human eye is so good at filling in information as long as you give it enough, uh, which was really my goal here. I, I, did, I didn't need to paint the pores of the skin because your brain knows what's going to be there. 
And now the rest of the recording I really feel is me essentially just filling in the blanks. Um, I pop around the image, like here I'm giving some texture to the highlight to make sure it blends in with the, the painting. Um, I don't think there's really much I can add because most of the working out I've done in the first sort of a third to half um, of this process. Um, I just, I, I want to get all of my sort of my rules for the image down at the beginning and then it's just sort of rest of it, it's just filling in, it's just sort of legwork really. Sometimes I almost understand why, you know, the masters had a, a bunch of people doing their paint for them because they're like, I've done the hard work and the lighting, you just, you just fill it in and it's like, yeah, I do understand that now. <laughs> So I'm just going to leave the rest of the recording running and there's about 3 minutes left of it sped up uh, at 12 speed. I hope I've maybe given some ideas to people. Um, I always think it's really fascinating when artists talk about their process. Um, everyone is so different, everyone has learnt from such a amalgamation of, of points. I mean my background, I went to uni for um, 3D animation so I know Maya and, and texturing and, and all the everything like that so being able to you know get taught how lighting is actually produced in CG has given me some you know some pointers for how to produce it in 2D later on um, but yeah so thanks all for viewing I'd love to put a song here to, to play out until the end but uh, copyright claims in YouTube will probably take it down so um, please put on Circus by Britney Spears to watch the rest of this thank you And here is the final image. I'll have links in the description for to the image itself so you can have a look at it. Um, I've been Harriet and thank you very much for watching.